So before we start, uh, Mike, Nick, can you hear us? You're, you're muted right now, but let us know if you can hear us. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, thank you, Nick. No problem. Sorry. You all ready? I'm all right. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can write. <laughs> I did make coffee, so I know I said I wouldn't, but my printer is just so awkward. I don't know how to do both sides. Okay, it is uh, August 25th, 2021 at seven o'clock in the evening. This is the beginning of the Town of Belgrade Appeals Board meeting. Present we have, do we need to? We have a roll call on the agenda, so <laughs> call the roll. Roll call. Norma Blazer. I'm here. Dave Bonner here. And Dick. Dick Bourne is here. Bourne is here. Oliver here. And Nicholas Alexander. Nicholas Alexander. He's on screen. Here. All right. Okay, thank you, sir. And absent will be um Bell. Bell. That's Beth. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda would be old business, which is a approval of the May 26, 2021 minutes. I assume everyone has read them by now. Um, are there any additions, deletions, substitutions in the minutes? I hope they'd be approved to submit it. Okay. So we have a motion by Dave to move that they're approved. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Bourne will second that motion. All in favor? Corey, how would you like to vote? Oh, Nick. Oh, excuse me, Nick. Yes. Oh, he wasn't at the meeting, he so he's not eligible. Oh, he's not sure. That's right. Okay, so the it is uh, 420. Motion's carried. Next item would be new business. So uh, letter A, review of Board of Appeals ordinance and consideration of needed updates. Also discuss the Department of Environmental Protection shoreland zoning updates related to variances and considerate, well, next one will be consideration. Okay, so um, Norma and Dick, thank you for your work on this so far. Um, so Norma, could you do me a favor and take the lead on this for right now? Um, what you've done put together yeah i'm going to find it on my i have to find it on okay. my thing just a second um so dick was the only one thing that you uh, felt really compelled to change at that point i think there was three three things three things one of them was uh i don't know exactly where it is but uh it, it, it's a, it says that you can vote yes no abstain, but it, it, it's the punctuation is messed up. So, okay. So this is a nine-page document that was approved uh, in 2018. Right. And the reason it's coming before us is um, one particular matter. Yep. There is a reference in section. Um, Seven is it six? Section six. So that's section seven will be voting. No, I think the the, the uh, I didn't 
I didn't bring the one with the annotations, unfortunately. Uh, I've got it here. I've got it here on my. But there's a reference to section replacement, the alternate. Uh, section. Uh, let's find it. Okay, it's referring to section. Okay, so it. The error is in section seven, appeal procedure, and it refers to the pursuant to section six, and I believe that should be five. And, um, yes. Skip some of that out some time that's, ago. That's correct. So that is the major error, okay? And then if we're doing that, there are other things we can or not do. Um, one of them is uh, we refer to the board of selectmen and the selectmen and the board and the uh, they refer to themselves as the board of select persons right and select persons so we could change that throughout Mary actually thinks that's probably a good idea okay um, Mary will, um, the other one is the law that governs our board refers to associate members, and we throughout refer to alternate members. Mm -hmm. However, I ran that by Mary Fogel today too, and she said that to be across the board consistent with other town ordinances, we should probably stick with, we could stick with alternate, because that's the way the others read. So we might not, we might not choose to, change that I don't know I, I believe I found one reference to uh, or I found a lot of references to uh, the uh, alternates but there was one to the associate I believe so we can just do a word search for associate yeah we have a if we're going to do that I think that we have an inconsistency there if we don't I think we should uh, change everything to alternates. So that would be in disagreement with the state statute, but in agreement with the other town ordinances. Okay. Just well, if we change them, maybe the other ones will have to change too. Right. Anthony, what do you think? Should we stick with the So town? I don't think it's a material change uh, that would impact any of the decisions that you make and since no. we do have members who are identified as alternates i think that would be the the best way to refer to them in the ordinance itself so the answer would be read through it and just make sure it's always yes always, always alternate. yeah and like you said norma we i would just do a board search on this for selectmen and for associates and, and change those yeah so right. select board right and then not select men and then uh, all Yes. And there was one other little thing. Um, Dave uh, Dick also pointed this out where the officers are given to be president and the chairman and secretary, I guess. Where are you looking at? And then, uh, section four. Four. And then it's repeated later, and, and uh, Dick was suggesting that we might not include that one. Okay, so at A in four, it says the board shall consist of a chairperson and secretary, okay? And it says when they'll be elected. And then later it defines the officers again. Well, I think it just it just explains in B and C what their duties are. Okay, and in C, in six, section six meetings in B. It says uh, the annual. Oh, I see. Okay. And, and I think Dave was suggesting that we remove that sentence, right, Dave? Dick was. Number six, Dick. Um, In uh, 6 B. B. 6 B. Is the annual the organization, time? organizational meeting of the board shall be the first done. regular meeting mm -hmm. following the annual town meeting. Did you want to change that or delete it? Is that what you said, Noah? 
Yes, mm -hmm. because it's a repeat of something that is um, stated in 4A. Now, I'm not saying that's a big deal, but. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, you could, I think, delete that whole paragraph. I just wonder then, do you, do you have to do any sort of amendment to renumber the, the subsequent paragraphs? So C becomes B and B becomes C and so forth. Well, if you delete B altogether. Yeah, I asked. I, I I'm so glad I actually ran something by Mary and she caught it and uh, and we had a conversation about it because we have to show how the ordinance was worded with yeah, a yeah, line through it. it so that you can still read it and then show the proposed mm -hmm. change wording. We can't like just delete something and stuff. So right. Okay. So um, if we change that, I've seen other ordinances. Where there's a B and it's empty. Yeah, you could leave it vacant. Yeah. Go back to your submission at the board, to, 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 to the select board. You need to show them where the changes are. Right. 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 And and the citizens have to be able to see it too. Uh, uh, yes. That's true. Yeah. Um, and then after it's approved at town meeting, then we can then the right. wipe out the. But there's always a record. Uh, was from this point in time to that point in time, and then it changed, and then from that's how it looked. Okay. So that's the whole story. It's not a it's not a lot. I mean, uh -huh. oh, I think the, one more thing: a punctuation error that Dick. Yeah, had. it's on. Um, you want to do that one? I'll, I'll come back. I think that should be there. It's Where on. Uh, it's on uh, section seven C on page five, uh, very top of page five. Oh yeah. Yeah, it says uh, poll, polling voting numbers for a yes, no, or abstain. It's it, punctuation is messed up, so it should be quote yes, quote, comma, quote no, quote, comma, mm -hmm. or quote abstain. Right. Now the comments go inside the quotes, right? Yes. Yes. So it's yes, comma, and quote. Yep. Begin a quote, no comma, end quote. Right, right. Or begin quote, abstain. End quote. End quote. End. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So that's, I think that's it. All right. Go back. Go back. So go, go, back, back. go, back, so go back, back to the question about uh, four uh, B, B, five, five, uh, six, six B. The problem that I have with with that is that if we define define it in two places, then sure should something sometimes something's going to change and we'll end up changing it in one place and not the other. And we're we're very explicit in uh, the section on uh, officers and duties, section A, 4A, that who the officers are and when the election shall take place. So that 6B is, is uh, really uh, totally redundant. So delete last sentence. I, so would delete I mean. B totally, right? <clears throat> that's, what would, that's what I would recommend. So delete all is, 6B. Is the timing of the meeting redundant also? Yes, it's that's addressed in. Yeah. Uh, Jan. Annually. 4A. The, the second sentence of 4A says selections also shall take place during the first meeting following the annual town meeting. Right. Now that applies to all the boards, correct? Yes. Okay, so we will, um, if everybody's on board of that, we will delete. Uh, 6B and then renumber. Re letter those, okay, Norma? Not re letter, just leave B empty. I think that's how it's done. Leaves B empty? Well, yeah. event eventually uh, it will get changed. But, uh, yeah. So, and what I'll do is I'll check with uh, the main municipal association's legal department <laughs> to see if, if we delete that, then do they automatically renumber or, do we, or should we leave it vacant? Mm -hmm. Or right. We'll see their, their legal advice. I, th I think they would probably say leave B there and put deleted. Yeah. 
until it's voted on or just no, I have no to, I have to assuming assume. it's approved. Yeah. Oh wow. <clears throat> That's the way most of the state. Okay. Yeah. You know, the other thing that can happen is right. some somewhere down the line we we read something that refers to six B and somebody goes to the ordinance and it's not anything at all like should, yeah. you know, because they're sure. looking at an earlier version from something that happened in an earlier time. So, I think most codes, most codes that I've been involved with, just read as and they're not paraphrasing in that section. Oh, okay. so it's deleted. Anthony, have you, have you seen that before where we can delete this one paragraph as, uh, as mentioned in the annotation or as annotated mm -hmm. instead of just leave it as annotated. Yeah. And the last thing is if I remember it you said um yeah Anthony uh, has actually told me this we have to have this before the select board by December January at the very latest, but December is what our goal should be mm -hmm. in order to have them approve it. And then does it go to public hearing? That's after? correct. And it goes to public hearing, then it goes to, to the election. Correct. The same thing with our cemetery. Yeah. And with the uh, at the public hearing, if they hear something that may want them to send you back to the drawing board, that you Make some changes based upon what they hear at the public hearing. Is it your experience that there are a lot of people who show up? These public it's my experience that nobody shows up. What do you show up on? So it's like a most <laughs> other government meeting. <laughs> well, <laughs> unless it's paving the road. So what we can do is we can, you know, I'll uh, do a, a document that tracks the changes that you have talked about tonight. And then we can take that to the select board for their consideration at their second meeting in September, which would be September the 21st. So you're the, going to create the tracking document? I will. Okay, okay good. good. Well, um, thank good. you. Good. I'm going to do that. It's very helpful. So you know what the changes are. You can work, we, you can work with Noma. Yeah. Well, and once I do the, the changes, I'll send it to you guys to review. Okay. But but we can we can go ahead and vote vote on the changes at our September meeting. I, I would I would uh, go ahead and vote on them tonight. Okay. I'll make the changes, send it to you. You guys review it. If there's nothing else that needs to be done to it, then then, then we'll take it to the select board on it. If that's the case, I'll make a motion we, we adopt the changes as discussed and send it forward to, to uh, Anthony for markup. I can second that. So I'll second it by Dick Bourne. You have, you know, the motion is correct, Norma? I, I do. I, I'm not done yet, but I do. That's okay. <laughs> then take your time. Actually, I can go look at it, but. Just in case it doesn't work. Okay. All in favor of the motion. Oh, uh, with these meetings, Mike, uh, yep. because it's video. Oh, video, you get a roll call. call. I'm oh. sorry. Okay. Uh, all in favor of this motion. Uh, roll call. Norma Blazer. Yes. Dick Bourne. Yes. Dave Barra? Yes. Michael Hano? Yes. Motion's carried. Left for Nicholas Alexander. Alexander. Yeah. Oh, he's here. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to have to get used to this man. Okay, unanimous five to zero. Do we have to go back and do the minutes like that too? Mm -hmm. No, because he wasn't no, at that that's last right. meeting. Okay. Okay, um, so we're all set with, you're gonna take care of that between you and yep. Nomer and yep. 
All right. So the other thing was the uh, discussion of the Department of Environmental Protection shoreline zoning updates that you sent out to us through the um, plan board relating to variances. Now, is that something that we need to consider putting in our ordinance or not? Um, Well, let me go back to George's original email. Let's get the date. If you find the date on that, would you? Yeah. I think that was August 19th. Yes, so, no, it was uh, August the 13th. Oh, God, that's my birthday. August the what? 13th. That was my birthday. So, so George writes uh, about this uh, issue of the DEP shoreland zoning news. There is a reminder within this document that issued variances are required to be submitted to the DEP for their review. This, of course, does not affect us, but the Board of Appeals. He was writing to the planning board. Maybe this newsletter should be forwarded to, to uh, the members of the Board of Appeals as a reminder. So let me look down at the so there's an article in here and it says uh, over the past year has come to our attention that multiple municipal variance applications were never submitted to the Department of Environmental Protection for review. In some instances, local boards may have approved variances in violation of state law and could have benefited from department comment. So in other words, they're serving as a backstop. Uh, to you folks to make sure that the that the variance is in accordance with the law. Um, and in others, not submitting a copy of the variance request delayed local decisions. As a reminder, state law requires municipalities to forward applications for variances from dimensional standards involving shoreland property. So this is only in the shoreland zone to the DEP at least 20 days prior to the local board of appeals taking action on the application, not hearing it, but taking action. Right. Uh, under Title 38 MRS Section 438A6, quote, the material submitted shall include the application plus the supporting information provided by the applicant. The application should include space for the appellant to provide documentation for the undue hardship criteria, and ours does do that. These criteria are defined under Title 30. The applicant has the burden of proof to show that their situation represents an undue hardship as defined by the law. And then after submission to the department, the commissioner, typically through staff, then has 20 days to comment on whether the submitted information supports the undue hardship criteria. These comments become part of the record for the Board of Appeals to use in its decision making. So they're not making a decision, but we're still, we still you, make the decision. That's right. right. But they're providing you their thoughts on, on the decision. The comments should not be used to substitute for the local Board of Appeals findings of fact. So we still have to do the findings of fact document uh, that we had. The commissioner does not make the decision for the local Board of Appeals, but rather offers perspective on how an individual variance should be handled locally, informed by input from the Office of the Attorney General when needed. And that by that, they mean the DEP will seek the AG's opinion if they need that. So, and then, and then it, you know, we can obviously provide that uh, electronically to the DEP. So, it's just something to be mindful of. Uh, in the two years he, uh, I've been here, you guys have not granted. Well, that's right. So, but should we do, should the next time we consider a variance application, it is something we'll need to send to the DEP after you've heard the initial uh, presentation by the applicant and then, and then schedule your meeting. We'll then at that point send it to the DEP for their, for their thoughts. And then once they send us the thoughts, we'll forward that to the Board of Appeals. Well, is the uh, planning board going to re <clears throat> revise the shoreline zoning ordinance to reflect this requirement? Um, well, I think that this 
I don't know that this would be a requirement in the shoreland zoning. No, well, they they have an appeal section. I have to go. I have that to go back. Yeah, I'd have to go back and study that dip to see if you know. Fr frankly, I think the, the think DEP is overstepping their bounds by a very substantial amount in that. Um, when it comes to shoreland zoning uh, decisions, they have to be filed with DEP, but they are filed after the decision is made by the planning board. And this business of submitting the variance application and so forth prior to a decision at the town level, I think is inappropriate. I mean, if, if the decision is so egregious, egregiously wrong that uh, that they need to uh, have a, a take action to have it reversed or something of that sort. Um, they certainly have that option, but uh, it, it seems seems to me it, it puts a complication in things that's totally unnecessary. It's one more step that's unneeded, I think. Yeah, it's unneeded. And so is there a, do you know if there's a cost? No. Associated with this no. to the no. to the uh, grievance, no. The applicant, no. no just... but I mean, it's up to us to send that to the uh, to the DEP, and it's just a matter of scanning up the, the application and and shooting it to the DEP. Well, it certainly costs in time. It may not be done. Yes, yeah, right. That could add another month. Sure. We had you had forty at forty days. Forty days. Because you submitted twenty, okay. and then they have twenty. To think about it, then they have to give it to the attorney general office as well. Yeah, yeah. they have to. They have to respond back. It sounds like to me within that twenty days. days. Yeah, we did have to send one decision or, uh, that we were contemplating, and we had a letter from them when we decided it. Do you recall that? Um, Dick? Yeah, they, that's right, but it was it was after the decision, after our decision. It was. Mm -hmm. I remember that. So to wrap up here, I, I think we, um, like Anthony said, this will just be a, a reminder or a caution from them into mm -hmm. what we may need to do or anybody have any other thoughts? I'd like to know if everything you said and Anthony is in that email that I can't find, but I will find later. He read it. Yeah, yeah, I just read it. Yeah, that's what different. you sent us, yeah. right? Yeah. And what day do you have that you sent? Uh, well, wait a second. Let me. So you read an article that was. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, so, so George actually, George sent it to me. Yeah. On August the thirteenth. I don't know when I forwarded it to the to you guys. I look. I didn't see it. Okay. Let me, I got. I thought it was weird. Let me look. August seventeenth. That's a different, there's a different one on the 17th. Shoreland zoning news. Oh, maybe that's August 19th. It came to us from, yeah, on the from, from Mike. That's where it is. I think I sent that to you folks, right? Yeah. The 19th. The 19th. Okay. Um, well, I, <clears throat> yeah, I don't want to see the uh, I don't want to see our Board of Appeals ordinance get in conflict with the shoreline zoning ordinance. Uh, the planning board, from, yeah, yeah, from the planning board. I guess my other my other thought is that a, a DEP newsletter is hardly a reasonable way for DEP or the state to be conveying to communities changes in requirements. Do they not have a register of regulations? Well, I, I will agree with Mr. Bourne. I think if I think a, a better way would have been to send. Uh, a message or an email to, sure. to each town that has a shoreland zoning ordinance. Oh, sure. Because otherwise, we wouldn't have known about this had, had George right. Seal not read it and passed it along. Right. And, but, and there should, 
should have been some action, formal action by DEP or or the or the Board of Environmental Protection that that authorized it. It's it's not every town, like small towns in Washington County or Rooster County, they don't have any uh, shoreline zoning issues, right? That's right. Yeah. So this would only apply for communities that have shoreline ordinances. Yeah. Yeah. In the lake areas up there, do they are they land, land use regular land yeah. probably applies to them? Hmm. So, my understanding is if you have shoreline, whether it's coastal or inland, you must have a shoreline zoning, right? There's a lot of lakes in Marusip County, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, but some of them, like, are in the four, uh, four million acres of it's controlled by Great Northern Paper, okay, you're right. The one I'm thinking of is, is or was anyway. All right. So I think we ought to take no action. Okay. Just we can just. Uh, yeah, I think because we have a we have a. What's that? I thought I think it was just meant to be informational. Okay, Norma. I got it. <laughs> we'll just say that we reviewed it, talked about it. It's informational only. And Okay. Well, suppose we take it that way, and then we uh, we get an application for a variance in the shoreland zone, and we take action, and we don't send them a copy twenty days. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what so happens? forth. What, what are they going to do about it? Uh, e easy, Dick. I'm too pretty to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> we, end up with, we end up with another, another legal, legal, legal fee. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the DEP police are not likely to come and arrest any of us. No. Hey, listen, I learned a long time ago you don't mess with natural resources. <laughs> well, and, and, but, you know, if this is a, a state requirement, uh, I am a firm believer that as government, we enact law. We yeah, force law. We're on our bound to follow it as well. So yeah. So like you know, so, so if we don't like it, we should we should press our state legislature to uh to have the law change. I agree. Right. Or the main municipal association. Yeah. So um, I'm sorry. I would like to understand why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't we be making our best decision with? their input i'm i'm not sure we're nearly as expert i mean maybe you are but but i'm not i don't i don't don't think that's the issue at all so okay. it's uh i think it's just it's an added step it's unnecessary yeah. it's basically yeah it's for like to accept 40 days and they just yeah and and they're this they're, they're saying they want to insert that process so that they can give us their perspective to consider in in making a decision so they give us a, a perspective and we say well respectfully we disagree with your perspective and we make the decision I, it's it's just a waste of time, effort, and everything else, uh, as far as an appeals board is concerned, because the criteria for making a decision are very plain. That's what one wants to be in relation to the, the disconnect between state and local government is that state government on numerous occasions go along with past regulations that have a direct impact right. on what that local government does and the local government doesn't know a thing about it. That's right. I mean, I, I, I think it's like a case where, where the Department of Natural Resources enacted rules and regulations that actually impacted the rates that utility customers were, were charged. They don't have any authority to do that. Where mm -hmm. was done. And I suspect that in 50 states, there are countless instances yeah. that, are, that are like that. Yeah. 
So we uh, all in agreement. That we're just going to say it's informational only. Yeah. And yes. thank you to uh, George Steele and Mr. Anthony Wilson. So last thing on our agenda, is if we have a need to meet, we can set a meeting date right now. We don't. We don't. Well, we need to have one in September to forward our to approve our changes, don't we? Well, you've approved them tonight. So unless I screw up on the on the tracking, which you will all get a copy of. Then no, I don't know. Let's, look, let's go ahead and recess for the call of the chair. Okay. Unless we decide we need to somewhat yeah, that's up to you. Yeah. Well, unless we decide we need one, we can recess for a couple of months. And and set for October or November. Whenever we go. October 27th. October 27th. I guess, well, I don't want to schedule it in that. Why don't, somebody just, else. why don't we just recess the call with the chair? Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. So we know that if we need a meeting, you will meet on the fourth Wednesday of the month. Right. All right. Okay. Until I guess we need a motion to that, don't we? Uh, now I'll make a motion to re recess the call with the chair. Second. Um, I don't, I, do we have to do that? I'm not, I, I think, I'm not I think sure. we have to either adjourn or recess. Well, we need to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Well, we adjourn this meeting, right? Yeah. Let's hope they don't oh, change the motion. No. Well, we adjourn. Okay. I second that. Okay. So thank you, Anthony, for uh, taking care of the rewrite on this. You bet. And then and we you will uh, present it to the to them in September. Yes, and so and so once you guys sign off on the after I send you the document, when I'll put it on the agenda for September the twenty first, and I'll make sure to invite all you guys to that select board meeting. And you can attend remotely if you like. Okay. Uh, and uh, offer any thoughts or comments or answer any questions that they may have. We need to vote on the adjourn motion. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, vote on the adjourn motion for this evening. Uh, roll call, Norma Blazer. Yes. Uh, Dave. Yes. Mr. Bourne. Yes. Michael Hano. Yes. Mr. And Mr. Alexander. Yes. Okay, motion carried five to zero. Is that Mr. Alexander? I it have is. never met him. Yeah. So, uh, Nicholas, do you want to, uh, maybe we should do some introductions here. You may not know all these people and they may not know you. So you want yes. to tell a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So I am Nicholas Alexander. I'm Corey's nephew and I'm a college student at KVCC studying liberal studies. Uh, Nicholas, did I hear that correctly? You're studying liberal studies? Yes. The, the irony is not lost on me, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you introduce yourselves if, in case Nicholas doesn't, okay. doesn't know you. So, Nicholas, do you always go by Nicholas or do you go by me? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm Norma. I always go by Norma. Blazer. Hi, Norma. Nice to have you. Thank you. I'm uh, Dave Bonar, uh, and uh, nice to have you agree to serve. And we need to lot. Nice. nice to meet you. As you can see, we're all getting a little long of time. <laughs> Hi, good evening, uh, Nicholas. I'm Michael Hano. I'm the chair, and uh, have been so for, I guess, going on three years. And thank you for uh, volunteering your services. No problem. Hi, Nick. I'm uh, Dick Bourne, and uh, I've been, uh, historically, I was on the planning board from, for most of the 1990s, and uh, <clears throat> I've been on Board of Appeals now for, I think this is my second term on the Board of Appeals, and uh, I'm a 
I'm a retired Q-tip, so. I'm a retired Q-tip? Yeah. Why did you say that? Do you want to explain yourself to these guys? Please. So welcome aboard, Nick. Glad to have you. Um, so Nick is just for the record, I, and I will put this in the minutes because I'd like to be able to go back and say what happened. Nick is Nick is going to serve uh, in the seat previously occupied by Corey. Correct. Which is a not an alternate seat; it's a full seat. Okay. And um, has he been sworn in? He has. Okay. And. Uh, so then Val will continue as an alternate, okay? Yeah. And do you, did you put a date on his, because his, did you put the same date that Cor oh, that Corey's? To, yes, it, it is, but you'd have to check with Mary Ellen to call what, okay. the, what the term is. Yeah, it might not be a full three years. It might not be. Well, and it wouldn't be because the, the, the terms begin each March. That would be okay. 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 I guess All that's right. it, huh?